My name is Deb Derry. I'm one of the public health nurses here at uh, the Kennedy Center and work alongside Caitlin and Karen in the health department. I'm relatively new to that department, but not new to the Kennedy Center as I worked for John Adams um, Nursing Home for a significant amount of time. And I came here to see you folks often and do some programs as well. And so being here at the Kennedy Center, I've worked with Marie a lot in your office here and she asked if um, I had any topics that maybe I'd want to present to the folks here and coming up into the holidays I was thinking I said you know a lot of people are dealing with stress and a lot of the different emotions that come along with the holidays so when I thought about it I said well it is the most wonderful time of the year but you know why don't I feel so wonderful sometimes I think a lot of us um, have this impression of what the holidays may be like. So, is this our view of the holidays? You know, there they are, Jimmy Stewart, a classic, right? Um, singing around the Christmas tree, uh, playing with your family, doing the usual Christmas carols. Uh, sitting at your Christmas dinner and enjoying the decorations surrounded by family and friends. I would hope that most of us are experiencing that type of a holiday, that type of a feeling during the holidays. There he is. During that movie, he went from, the hap he went from a happy family man to all of a sudden being overwhelmed. So do we feel sad? Do we feel depressed, overwhelmed? Bah humbug. I don't want to be around anybody. At least, I don't want to be around everybody who's just so happy because inside I'm not feeling that level of happiness. What causes holiday depression, especially in seniors, people who are older? We're using the word depression, but we're, we shouldn't really blame it on the holidays, that it's holiday depression because holidays are a time to celebrate, right? Some reasons we don't want to celebrate or feel down. Too stressful. I haven't even started. Right hand to God. On my mom's soul, well, I'll back it up. I've bought two Christmas presents. I'm stressed. I just had a big Christmas party this weekend. Had to get over that. And now I'm going out to do the shopping. But I'm stressed. It might be that we're distanced away from loved ones. Remembering friends, friends and family who are no longer with us. Holidays bring up a big thing for myself, my mom, not having my mom because she was the center of the holidays for me. And I think a lot of us have that with our, with our parents that we no longer have here with us. Lack of visitation if we're living in an assisted living or a nursing home, if we have people who in our family who are in these facilities, they may not get as many visitors. They're not gathering with their family around their table like they used to. Physical limitation to attend the holiday events. Things that people maybe used to go to. They might have gone, used to go to the Nutcracker all the time or the Boston Pops, but now they're not walking as well anymore. So it's difficult to get to those um, activities. And then I put down seasonal affective disorder. Any other, re we're gonna talk about that a little bit more, but any other reasons that we can think of, you can throw out that maybe you think about why the holidays may be the happiest of times for people. Too much hustle and bustle, I'm working extra hours, and not a lot, but it's still extra, and um, it leads to stress. Yeah, yeah. Customers are cranky sometimes. Absolutely. I'm putting up with them, and it's not my feelings, but there's somebody else's, and that's what I have to put up with. Absolutely, and especially if you're working in the public, within the community, and you're supposed to be the jolly one, 
and they're coming up and they're crabby because they're stressed trying to get everything done and you're trying to give a positive attitude back to them. That's very, very stressful. And trying to juggle all that. Working, yeah. working at the same time that you're trying to prepare for your own holidays and so forth. So that's a good one. That's a good one. All right. I want to talk about seasonal affective disorder a little. Because um, seasonal affective disorder, winter blues, winter depression, was originally called a mood disorder among those with normal mental health throughout most of the year who experience depressive symptoms at a certain time of the year. So seasonal affective disorder can also occur in the summertime as well. It's not just um, directed towards wintertime. Um, folks maybe have a, have a difficult time with the change in weather, the change in climate, the change in activities that they actually might be taking part in. Recently, however, seasonal affective disorders classification has changed from a mood disorder to a recurrent major depressive disorder that's, that is called with seasonal pattern due to only occurring during specific times of the year. So it's seasonal. It's basically what, what it is. Um, folks are maybe um, more inclined to, in the winter months, we want to sleep a little bit longer. We're not as, you know, we're, we're not as excited to come out in the 20 degree weather in the morning as we may be during the summertime. Um, we may not be getting together with people as much because of weather, because of the timing. Sun's going down a lot earlier in the winter time, so by 3, 30, 4 o'clock, we're all getting in our house and we're not coming back out again either. So, parts of it, seasonal affective disorder. Initially, previous, uh, a lot of medical experts, they were skeptical about it. Um, but studies have shown that many seniors truly experience it. And they experience a mood change during the seasons. Like I said, sleep more, have little energy, and feel depressed. It is always good, this is my biggest, to consult your primary care doctor if any of those symptoms persist. Those feelings, that depressed feeling, that tired feeling, that's a true feeling. Feelings are feelings, they are yours. But if those symptoms and those feelings persist, definitely consult a physician. And if they're less severe, Let's ask this question. How do we pull ourselves out of that holiday blue feeling? And it's hard. A lot of um, folks, seniors, not only seniors, but um, folks are alone during the holidays. And that's a difficult thing to do. That's a difficult thing to pull yourself out of and think, well, you know, I'm, I live alone. I'm not living with family. I don't really want to go out because it's too cold. They're not getting together with friends. So you're sitting at home and getting depressed. How do we pull ourselves? How do we pull ourselves out of that feeling? Anyone have any suggestions? Go to the Kennedy Center. Go to the Kennedy Center. Come on down here. Exactly. Exactly. Right, right. Right. I think it's difficult um, because if you don't have that kind of motivation, I can tell you um, uh, a friend or a buddy that can be brutally honest and say, hey, come on. I'm going out today. I'm going to come over. I'm going to pick you up. You're going to come out with me. Even if we go out for an hour, get those folks up and moving. That's good. I mean, I know the sidewalks are a little icy, but I find neighborhoods where, it's, where the sun is and it's melted. Absolutely. Get out little and little get some air. Running, whether it's great or small, I mean, it's a little bit less with the snow. Right, right. Or I work on a puzzle. Yep. I do something to keep my head busy. Absolutely, absolutely. It's hard, though. It's, it's hard to kind of... Keep yourself motivated if, if you kind of get into that, into that rut. Ten ways to get into the spirit. There's a lot, lot of other ways, but I listed these out. 
church activity, seasonal crafting, volunteering, decorating, reaching out to people we haven't heard from in a while. Um, I, my mom and I used to like argue about this, this reaching out, because she would get into the, well, you know, she hasn't called me. She hasn't called me. And I say to her, as she would say to me, the phone works both ways, you know. And now I've sort of taken that mantra for myself that I'm reaching out to people. I'm going to be the one reaching out to people. Um, I can't just sit back and wait. So it's kind of a nice mantra to keep for yourself. Watch a favorite holiday movie. Reminisce. Cook or eat a favorite holiday memory dish. How many people in here have a favorite holiday memory dish, like a mom or a grandmother? What do you got? Tell me. Shrimp scampi. Shrimp scampi. Nice. Are you Italian? So you do the fish thing. Nice. Nice. Very nice. And that's a family yeah, I tradition. Yeah, that was my last school going on, but now I, I learned how to make it, so I cook it. So that's nice. That's a great, warm feeling. Anyone else have a favorite dish? Kate. My mommy's Italian cookies. There you go. Every holiday has to have. Yep. Yep. Anyone else? We just snap cookies. Yeah. Those. Yeah. Is that someone's recipe or just your favorite cookie? Nice, nice, very nice, very nice. What is it? Oyster casserole. Wow, very nice, very nice. Yeah, but you know what? Bringing back that memory, bringing back that meal onto your table. I now make kapusta, which is a Polish cabbage that my babci, my great grandmother, uh, who was right off the boat from Poland, she used to make, and it was terrible. When I was a kid, that cabbage would stink up the house for four days straight, and you had to like make it, and then you had to wait like three days, and then, because as you kept it, it, it tasted better. And now I make it, and my husband and our youngest son are like, oh my God, here she goes with the cabbage again. They open the door and it just hits them. But on Christmas Day, they love that cabbage, you know. Chop up cabbage, chop up onions, um, cook it with white vinegar. Um, also chop up um, salt pork and cook that a little, throw that in as well. Salt, pepper, and just let it just boil and just go down. Yeah. So they complain about the smell, but they love it on their table. Pierogies, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we do pierogies. My Bapchi did pierogies at Easter time, so. But that's a great warm feel, memory for me. It's a funny one because we lived in a triple decker in Dorchester, and she was downstairs, and the entire house would just smell of like did you cabbage. Want to have cabbage. Yeah, 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 yep. Gwomkis, yep. Um, so, cooking a favorite dish. Uh, buy yourself a special gift. How many people buy themselves a Christmas gift when they're out shopping? <laughs> See? That's a good thing, you know? I mean, you're out shopping, you're trying to buy for everyone else. Oh, geez, I really kind of like that scarf. Try it on. You know what? Be good to yourself. Be good to yourself. It's not just about reaching out and being good to other people. We need to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves. Make a gratitude list. Now, gratitude list is a list of simple, everyday things for which we should be grateful. So when I was looking into the whole idea about how to lift your holiday spirits, thoughts, they talked about different things with gratitude lists, which I've, I've done in the past, but also journaling. You know, if you have a book and you need to write things down, some people just do that in general. I like to try to do that, but I do it for like two days and then the book just kind of sits there. And life gets in the way and I forget about it and all of that. Um, a gratitude list is something that maybe you can start at the beginning of the holidays or the beginning of preparing for the holidays around Thanksgiving and so forth. Making a list, and even if once a day you write down on your list special people in our lives, 
friends that we're grateful for, having a home, having a roof over our head, having food on our table, and how blessed we are for that. The fact that we woke up this morning, hey, let's be grateful for that, and life in general. What else are we grateful for? Just during the holidays or year round? All right. What are you grateful for? I heard someone over there say help. Yeah. So you stole you stole her answer. Okay. <laughs> Karen. Your children. A lot of people would say their children. Yin. Are you grateful that you're here today with us? Oh, your son. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Anyone else? My car. Your car. Gets me from where I want to go. I love it. I love it. <laughs> your independence. That's, that's, that's incredible. Your independence. That's great. Yeah. My grandkids, I'm grateful for. They're all sick right now. But, and, I, and I'm grateful that they're staying home, just so you know. But So those are the things. Um, Kate is going to pass around. I just wrote out a little uh, template for a, for a gratitude list. You can take it home. If you want to, use it. Keep it on your refrigerator. Maybe write down one thing every day. If you kind of get in that mood of like, oh, God, the holidays. What else? Yep. Day by day. Yep. Slip and slide a little bit. But yeah. I did pick up a new one for December. Nice. They have it at the uh, scene TV shop right across from the Thomas Crane Public Library. Nice. Sherry has a basket full of them there. Oh, that's sweet. And, uh, I, I look at that. That's great. That's great. Uh, books like Chicken Soup for the Soul that are out there, those are also nice things to, to get. Um, there are also nice things to give people as gifts. You know, not that we're trying to say, hey, Scrooge, here's some chicken soup for your soul. But, you know, I think most people would really appreciate that kind of like inspirational. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. So bottom line, whether it's from family, friends, or medical professionals, it's okay to ask for help and support. Ask your friends for help and support if you are getting into that holiday doldrum kind of thing um, to reach out. And there are plenty of folks here at the Kennedy Center that if you should ever need any, any support or help, please feel free to reach out to us as well. Our takeaways today, your feelings are your feelings. Doesn't mean because it's the holiday season we have to all walk around all holly jolly and all of that. Sometimes it's difficult to do that. Sometimes it's difficult to pull yourself out of those blues. It's okay to be blue during the holidays, but we want to make sure we're recognizing the length of time that that failing lasts. And if it's lasting longer, we definitely need to seek some assistance through family, friends, or our medical professionals. And be aware of how those feelings are affecting your overall health. If you're feeling like, you know, I really just don't want to get up out of bed today. Okay. Well, today is okay. But then if tomorrow I don't want to do that, and the next day I don't want to do that, my overall health, along with my mental health, are definitely going to suffer. Seek assistance and support and make sure you try to reach out and use tools like a gratitude list or like some of those other um, books that we've talked about that are the inspiration to kind of help folks get through the holidays. And happy holidays from the Quincy Health Department. Mm -hmm.